I've always said that one of the best ways to learn more about the guitar and spice up our playing is to learn stuff that was written on another instrument, like the sassy saxophone solo that I transcribed the other day. Hey there, kids. It's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Transcribing saxophone solos for guitar is one of those things that all the real-life jazz boys have been doing for years. Whenever you transcribe something that wasn't written for the guitar, you'll find yourself playing licks in ways that you never have before and using positions on the neck and combinations of notes that no guitar player would ever dream of. And whenever you learn that stuff and really absorb it, it can go a long ways to make your playing a lot more unique than every other guitar player who's playing every other guitar player's licks. But you don't have to be a jazzersaurus flex to benefit from it. Over the years, I've transcribed music that was written for the piano, the violin, the Bavarian cheese whistle, whatever, and put it here on the guitar, and it's always taught me something that I never would have figured out myself. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys a lick-by-lick -lick breakdown on how to play this sexy saxo-horn solo, and then we're going to talk some of the transcription tips and other things that we can learn from horn players to benefit our guitar playing. As always, downloadable tabs, backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more are available to everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Guitars. The kids are saying it's the coolest place on the entire interweb, and I am inclined to agree, so be sure to click the Patreon link in the video description and sign up today. Thanks! Gear-wise for today's video, I'm playing my Sir Modern T, which is plugged into a Highwind Direwolf Overdrive pedal, and that's hitting the front end of my Rev Generator 120. And all the delay and reverb are stock plugins that I'm running in Logic. Let's hear those tasty licks again at stepdad speed. First part of the solo section takes place over C minor to F major. So between those two chords you can say it has a very C Dorian quality at first. But then the next section is C minor, A flat, and B flat. Three chords that are all contained in the C minor scale or C Aeolian mode if you're a fancy pants. Fortunately, the C blue scale works over both of those, so that's what the majority of the solo is based around. We're going to start off here with something that's very common on the saxophone, but not very common on guitar, which is hitting the exact same note several times in a row. Now, you might notice right there that what I'm doing is I'm sliding into this B flat note on the G string, and then I'm playing the same B flat note on the B string. You're going to repeat that a couple times in a row like this. Whenever we play the same note in a couple different positions like that, I think it has a little bit more of that, you know, saxophone kind of sound. Because if you just hit that same B flat note a couple times in a row, it doesn't sound cool at all. Again, it's really common for horn players to kind of scoop into notes from a half step down, even if that note is out of key. Now after that, what we're going to do is to play a similar unison note kind of thing happening on some F notes. So you'll notice I'm sliding down into that F note from the G flat right there, which would be kind of that flat five blue scale note. A little bit of a stretch. Then we're gonna play this phrase. They get lots of slides here. Just trying to replicate the sound of all those little scoops that the sax player was doing on those notes. Cool slidey phrase on the G and B strings right there. Again, not something that I would write as a guitar player, but it sounds super cool. Sliding into G and B flat, then I'm sliding into B flat and C. Again, you can play it like this. That sounds like a guitar player though. Kind of reiterating that B flat note up here gives you that tonal variance that we're after. And then again, we're targeting E flat by means of D before we end on that C note right there. 
cool bluesy phrase right here, sliding into G, and then sliding down from G flat, again the flat five, the blue note. Slide back into F, then up here to the C note. Notice I'm trying not to pick too much here either. That's again, one of those things that you don't really hear with those sax solos. They're gonna sound really smooth. So we're gonna avoid picking as many notes as we can here. Then we're gonna slide around on the second string a little bit here. Then go to the G and play that lick again. Again, lots of slides here. We're going up, we're going up, and then we're going down. Then we're gonna play the last lick here on the G and B strings. Again, lots of reiteration of that C note over and over right there. That's the way that I found that sounded the most like a sax player playing it. So we're gonna slide in here to G and B flat. Then we're gonna slide into B flat on the G string to the C note on the B. Initially I played it like this. That doesn't sound cool enough though. That sounds cooler. Then what you're gonna do is to play the B flat, sliding to C, and then do that exact same move with your first finger right behind it. All together we're gonna have the unison stuff on B flat. Unison stuff on F. Sliding up on G and B. Walking down the scale. Then going up. And here's how lame that could have sounded if we didn't take consideration into some of those little accents and stuff, trying to imitate a horn player. That ain't gonna get your chicks anywhere. Whenever you're transcribing something that was written for another instrument and putting it on a guitar, I think it's really beneficial to try to get in the headspace of the original instrument. Now, full disclaimer, I don't know shit about playing sax. I know nothing about it, so I could be completely wrong here. But there's a couple of basic things that we all know about horns, right? You can only play one note at a time on them. So that means we're not going to have any overlapping notes at all as we play this. Every note has to be nice and separate but at the same time, smooth sounding. If you listen to the original, there's not like gaps in between the notes like that. It's much smoother sounding. So try to take that into consideration when you play. Now, another thing that we can really learn from horn players that I think would benefit a lot of us guitar players that suffer from, you know, musical diarrhea where we just shred and shred and shred during our solos is something that my good buddy and amazing guitar player Emil Wurstler pointed out to me a while back about anybody that plays an instrument that relies on your breath, right? On the guitar, we can just play as many notes as we want. We can just shred and shred and shred during our solos until, you know, our fingers give out or our pick melts or something like that. But a horn player can only play as many notes as he can contain in one breath. It's almost like the sax or any other instrument that relies on your breath to operate has built in like classy control, you know? Because you can't just play as many notes as you want to. You can only play as many as you can fit into a single breath. Editor's note because I know somebody in the comments has got to point out that Kenny G can do circular breathing and he played notes for 24 hours straight or whatever. I don't give a f about Kenny G. That's a really simple premise that I tried to absorb into my playing and improvising as much as I could. So next time that you're playing against a backing track or something like that, rather than just playing, you know, endless streams of hot licks all over your guitar, try really timing it with your breath and seeing how much you can play as you exhale only, right? Then whenever you're inhaling your breath, you have to stop playing, right? That's when you're reloading the next set of notes. Then when you exhale, it's back to notes again. If you try applying that breathing technique that I was just talking about to your guitar playing, I guarantee you'll instantly start playing stuff that's a lot more tasteful with a lot less just, you know, digital gerrymandering happening on the board. And that's the kind of stuff that you'll learn if you branch out and try transcribing stuff that was written for something other than the guitar. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to let me know in the comments section below what other non-guitar parts you'd like to learn next. If you like this video and want to help support my channel, be sure to check out that Patreon page at patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. Even for just a dollar a month, 
you get access to all kinds of goodies like backing tracks, bonus lessons, and so much more. But now it's time to get away from the computer, grab that guitar, and get to work. Less clicking, more picking.